It all began when I started to notice quick changes in my mother. No. No, it began way earlier than that, when I really think about it. Years. Maybe even before I could remember the difference between right and wrong. Which was... A pretty long time ago. I've always been one of the two brothers in my family. Our mother was single. She always had been, ever since I could remember. Our father had bailed out on us when the news of my brother had arrived. We loved our mother. I mean, we, we really did. She bought us nice clothes, even though she couldn't afford it, uh, providing necessary food, and making a good home for us. Everything was great. My mom just had some issues with drinking. And it, it, it wasn't just a problem. It, it was a big problem. She, she stayed single, even though she tried to meet others. It, it would always go well in the beginning until she would change her mind and show the next man out the door. Always the same story with her. I felt very alone. My brother wasn't very interested in playing with me, seeing as he was about five years older, and he always thought of me as that annoying little sibling. But all I wanted was company. I didn't find any success in making friends in school during my spare time, and I just spent every moment alone. My mom didn't care, of course. She was too busy trying to finish up her work so that she could spend the last few hours at home drinking her evenings away. But I guess every single second of loneliness brought something out of me. I started to daydream a lot. Making imaginary friends was one of my favorite hobbies. Yeah, a hobby. I made new ones so often that it was hard to keep up. Even for me. You see, there was this particular imaginary friend. He wasn't like the others. It, this was the only one who gave me more peace than anything. He'd play with me, of course, but he only came around at night. Then we'd talk and fool around and make super sure that my mom didn't hear my cheerful giggling. He was an expert on many things, but he, he was the best at crafting and making me puppets. Every day, he'd turn up with a new doll in any design that I wanted it to be. That was his thing. The puppet man. I always managed to escape the fact that I had imaginary friends, but with him, it was hard to deny that he was actually there, because I knew that he was. Every night when he said that I had to sleep, he stood by for another hour just to watch and make sure that I was actually falling asleep. His golden glowing eyes observing me from afar in the darkness. I stared back at him. His gray face was keeping me calm as he kept smiling towards me. I fell asleep every night. But I couldn't talk to anyone about the creature visiting me every night. It was... odd. And time went on as it should have. I grew up. So did my brother. The only thing that seemed to stay the same was... Well, mom's drinking habits. My mother moved out around the age of 18. He couldn't put up with her anymore. I was waiting patiently, though. I suppose that that was the only thing that I could do when being so alone. My imaginary friends never left, however, and it started to become a problem. He continued to visit me every single night, keeping me company. And I started to ignore him. I was mad. I mean, I had to be. At 12 years old, the whole imaginary friend deal was ridiculous. I had other things to do anyway. Homework, playing with my PlayStation 2, I was... I was content. Not happy, just... You know, just neutral. I didn't feel lonely. I left that thought a long time ago. Yet there he was, staring at me with his face hidden beneath the shadows of my room. Glowing eyes, studying me. Another year passed. No success. 
I eventually got tired of everything. School was being a downer and my mom got worse with her drinking. Even to that point where she started to self-harm. She refused to talk to me, even when I tried to. She lost her job eventually. It was... It was something I had wanted to see happen for a long time. It always seemed like something that might help her realize that she had a problem. But no. After that, my mom wouldn't do anything but sit there, drinking all her problems away. She became angrier with me. Everyone noticed so. Everyone who was... Well, me. I did everything I could to stay at home, sleeping over at my aunt's place or even trying to contact my brother. But there was certain nights I had to stay home. And it was hell on earth. Every single day, she would scold me for nothing. It was such stupid, simple things. Uh, forgetting to buy milk on the way home. Forgetting to cook dinner. What could I do? I was 13. My mom couldn't even tell me how sorry she was. She just kept on. And one night, she just lost it. I remember it so clearly. It was something about the dishes. I had to clean after dinner, like always, and this time I accidentally dropped the plate. It fell to the floor, hitting hard and shattering into tiny pieces. My mom was, of course, furious with me. I could understand her at some points. I could get why she was upset with me, but now I blamed her for everything that happened. But this time she didn't just scream in my face for a minute or two. This time she was acting out violently, throwing a chair across the room. She screamed at me for not being the perfect son, how she'd lost everything because of me and my brother. Everything was our fault. A slap to the face. And then... She was done. I went and locked myself up in my room, and there... There he was waiting for me. It was evening, after all, and for the first time in almost two years, I spoke to him. He was the only soul I could talk to, even though he was imaginary, even though I was basically talking to myself. I didn't care. I desperately needed it. And for the first time, he spoke to me. He was more calm than I thought he'd be. Your mom, she's evil. I disagreed. She wasn't evil. Was she? But she had ruined my life. She hated me. But still, I shook my head. Don't cry. He spoke to me. Big boys don't cry. So calm down. I'll go talk to your mom. Now, go to sleep. You'll need it. I did as he asked. No questions. I went to bed. My heart was pounding, my head spinning. My mom never checked up on me. She would probably leave anyway. That's the only thing she ever did giving up on us on everything, uh, on life. It didn't take me long to fall asleep that night, and in the morning I would just return to school like nothing had happened and find my same pathetic, alcoholic mother the next day. But there was, but there was never meant to be another day. I woke up again. It was completely dark around me. The apartment had lost all of its power. I didn't wake up all by myself, though. There was some kind of noise outside of my bedroom. Wearily and insecure, I stepped up from my bed and walked out to the hall. It was a cracking noise, like someone stepping on ice or broken glass. But it was far more dull than that. My curiosity took over, and I continued until I found the source of the breaking and snapping sound. It was my mother's bedroom. 
What was going on in there? My mom was supposed to be sleeping at this hour. I came closer. The noise appeared louder. And after a minute of listening outside of the room, I decided to go in. I pushed the wooden door and stumbled to my knees. What I saw... No one was supposed to see such a thing. My mom had been thrown towards the floor. Her face was bloody, and her nose seemed broken. She was kneeling down with her arms extended backwards in an unnatural position, her hands cramping out of pain. She looked like she was screaming, but only coughed out, wheezing hard. She saw me. And that's when I lost it. I tried to scream, but I couldn't. I only clawed up towards the bedside, clutching onto it like it was the only thing to save me at that point. And my mother's arms were breaking in front of my face. By something that I couldn't see or hear. I could only see her, my mother, scared for her life. And then, he slowly appeared before me. His gray hands and face emerged from the shadows. His glowing eyes were completely focused on her. And then, I could see what he was doing. With one foot on her back, his fingertips wept golden threads that had tied themselves onto her arms. He was breaking my mother's arms in two. My puppet man. And then her bones wouldn't hold any more. They eventually broke, snapping in a horrible trail of sounds. I tried to scream again, but... Everything was once again muted by my own fright. I tried to calm down, tried to realize that I was only imagining everything, but it was real. My own friend, my imaginary friend, was killing my mother, and I did nothing to stop him. He wasn't pleased. I tried to call to him, tried to beg for him to stop, but he just wouldn't. He wouldn't listen. He only continued to hurt her further. He'd take his time, and seemed to slowly break every bone in her body. He forced me to sit there, made me watch as he broke my mother apart. He told me that he was going to get rid of the evil. I tried to believe him, but I just couldn't. He broke her legs, ribs, every finger. Bones turning every direction that they shouldn't, and I screamed and screamed, and no one heard me. His golden eyes turned to look at me as he hushed me for one final time. Then he strangled her. Beautiful, golden, glowing strings of death wrapped around her neck, squeezing out every last glimpse of life that I could see in my mother's eyes. And it was the last thing that I could remember before it went dark. I passed out on the floor by the bedside. Our neighbors had heard my screaming and had called the police. Everyone pitied the orphan who had seen his mother die in front of his eyes. But according to them, my mother hadn't been murdered. She'd been found in the middle of the room with a noose around her neck and the rope hadn't been able to carry her body after a while and had burst in two, causing my mother's corpse to fall to the floor. I never spoke about her death ever again. Neither, neither did I say another word about my imaginary friend. Maybe. Maybe it had all been a horrible dream, and he was always just in my head. Even at my mom's funeral, I was completely alone. My brother didn't even bother showing up. Only my aunt and uncle were there. And everyone saw this coming somehow. Everyone but me. And I slept hours waiting for him to come and pick me up. The only one who had listened to me all this time. Kept me company. Comforted me when I needed it the most. And when I was standing alone by her coffin... I felt someone grabbing my hand, and I smiled. His gray hand on my shoulder. I never thought you'd come back.